Pokemon Infinite Fusion is the pinnacle of Pokemon fan games. You wanna fuse a Darkrai with a Torchic? Bam! Muck and Murkrow? Come and ride up. Heck, you can even mash together Magikarp and Arceus. But we won't be doing any of that today. No. This is the story of a man. A man named General Shock who conquered this insane version of the Kanto region with his army of Pikachu fusions. Let me know in the comments what two Pokemon you most want to see fused. Also, be sure to subscribe and let's try to smash 2,525 likes for our good buddy Pikachu. With all that said, let's get into it. The game opens with the introduction of Silphco's newest invention, the DNA Splicers, which can be used to combine any two Pokemon together to create an entirely new species. By the way, I'll be playing this game in modern mode, which gives more encounter variety, including Pokemon through Gen 6, allowing us to create even crazier fusions than usual. After reading a letter from the Pokemon League officially welcoming us as a member, we do the usual dash to Route 1 where Professor Oak stops us and brings us to the lab. Of course we grab Charmander, because who wouldn't want to see a Pikachu Charizard fusion? And our rival, Private Tiny, takes the remaining Bulbasaur and Squirtle and fuses them. After a few scratches, we take his Squirt Sword down and he heads off. A quick trip to and from Viridian City to deliver Oak his parcel, and now we can finally kick our journey off. On Route 22, we battle the Private again, but now his starter has been replaced by Shinx and he has an Eevee. Charmander is able to take them both down, opening up a hidden area on Route 1 called the Secret Garden. Here you can catch a few base form Pokemon, and most importantly, in modern mode, they added Pichu. I grab a few of these little guys, a Ryalu Eevee Fusion, which I unfuse, and Zerua. Then on Route 2, I encounter this Ralts who joins the team. In Viridian Forest, I run into a Shroom Vesta, who I decide to catch and unfuse, leaving me with both Shroomish and Larvesta. Now I finally break out the Splicers and create Raichu, who is so adorable, I would literally die for him. And Shroomchu, who's... trying her best. When fusing Pokemon, you can choose which ability and nature to keep, as well as whether to combine current movesets or not. Since I don't want all my Pokemon to have static, I'll always be picking the other ability when creating fusions. After working our way through Viridian Forest, it was finally time to take on Brock. I wanted to match my team size to each gym leader, and good thing about this game is they actually make you when you start each gym battle. Also, I'll be doing my best to stay at level caps, but I couldn't find a guide for modern mode, and some levels were different than what I saw for the base game. Now, I didn't realize that modern mode assumes you've already played this game once. In order to give more variety, it changes the gym leader's typings to one that typically makes sense. So imagine my surprise when I see that Brock starts this battle with a steel grass shroomyard. I obviously couldn't believe it since I tried to leech seed this thing turn 1 as it scratches us for free. Now I swap Raichu into a Fury Cutter and next turn counter on scratch for 50%. Unfortunately, since Fury Cutter is weaker than the normal type move, our second counter isn't quite enough for the KO. I decided to switch to Thundershock which does abysmal damage so we're forced to take one more scratch before we finally KO the Mushroom Robot with another. Now the ace, Steed Jr. hits the field, which I uselessly charm before dropping to confusion. Really would have pegged this thing as a physical attacker. Anyway, it's all up to Shroom Chew, whose Mega Drain does almost nothing. After setting up Leech Seed and taking decent damage from confusion, I paralyze the baby Steelix and dig my heels in for the longest Gym 1 battle ever. Even with an Orenberry for recovery, our constant sapping from Leech Seed plus Thundershock damage is enough to outlast Steed Jr., winning us a hard-fought badge number one. Now I return to the Secret Garden and catch myself four more Pichu so I can fill out my party. Meet Zochu, Ichu, Charchu, and Ralchu. On to Route 3, I discovered that in this game Pichu doesn't evolve by friendship, but at level 15, so Shroomchu is the first to evolve into... Shroomchu. We also see one of the first minor changes from the original Gen 1 story. Nurse Joy is taking care of a Geodude outside Mount Moon, and Brock comes rushing in to help. Inside the cave, we overhear some guys dressed in all black discussing how they'll be invincible once their boss's plan succeeds. As they run off, they block our path with a rock, so we return to the cave's entrance to report to Brock. He tells us that the group is the notorious Team Rocket, but usually they don't try anything on a grand scale. After giving us Rock Smash so we can continue on, we take down a trainer with a really cool Turtwig Unknown fusion and get our second evolution, Raichu. Shortly after this evolution, the rest of our team follows suit, resulting in the Pikachu versions of Zochu, Rolchu, and Charchu. Funny enough, one level later, the Charmander half of our Charchu evolves, giving him an even greater power boost. 
We finally catch up to Team Rocket and their boss as they steal a moonstone from a scientist in order to power a huge machine. They place a Rattata, Ekans, and Sandshrew on some platforms, and as we're about to stop them, Giovanni makes the scientist battle us to stall for time. Luckily, the machine blows a fuse before it could do whatever it was about to, and as the team pulls out, we notice that Giovanni calls it the Triple Fusion Machine. With nothing else to do in the cave, we move on to Cerulean City, where it's time for a good old-fashioned rival fight. Tiny's starter has now been fused with a Cottony, so I switch Charchu in as he tries to stun spore us. Since you can't paralyze electric types in this game, I nasty plot after the free switch as we're hit by Spark. Next, a plus two Ember gets a one shot and Tiny reveals that he fused his Eevee with a Solosis. This thing's defenses are no joke as our boosted Ember only does around 30%, but luckily gets a burn. After Psywave does big damage, I swap to Zochu, whose illusion is gonna make things really confusing for you guys throughout this run, but as you can see, Psywave doesn't affect him. We get a faint attack knockout next turn, and then Niniard hits the field. I go back to Charchu, who survives Leech Life with 5 HP, but sadly the Ninkata Pawniard was holding a Focus Sash, so it lives on one and takes us out next turn. Ryuchu is able to avenge his friend with a few Force Palms, leaving our rival with only a regular Feebas? Two Thundershocks later, and we've got ourselves a win. Before taking on Misty, I train Ichu up until he evolves and catch this Solora that I unfuse in the box. At level 20, I decide it's time to take on the gym, which is now Ice-type. Misty leads a Glaceon Tyrogue fusion that tries to fake out Raichu, but thanks to Inner Focus, he still Force Palms turn 1. After getting the para, Misty heals, and two more Palm Strikes take the Icy Fighter down. The Ace, however, is a Mantike Lapras fusion. Raichu crits his first Force Palm as Manris eats a Citrus Berry and confuses us. Thankfully, our little fighting type is able to break through confusion twice while hanging on through a bubble beam to solo sweep this gym all on his own. On Route 5, we come across one of my favorite Pokemon, Hone Edge, which we obviously have to add to the team. I decide to unfuse my Shroom Chew, but didn't realize that Pokemon lose moves when they unfuse. Regardless, it's so worth it once I create the Steel Electric Honchu. I mean, look at how great this sprite is. I also went ahead and gave up on Ralchu, favoring the Pikachu Abra Fusion, who shortly after being fused evolves into Kidachu. At Bill's house, we find the researcher attempting to fuse himself with a Rhydon. Although he succeeds, his hands are too big to unfuse himself, and as thanks for helping, he gives us the SSN ticket. As we arrive on Route 6 outside Vermilion, we start to encounter wild Pikachu, and I decide this is the perfect opportunity to stock up on more electric rats for my army. Then I had an unbelievable idea. What would happen if I fused two Pikachu together? Introducing Chonkachu. No stat changes, just Chonk. Before my whole team gets overleveled for Surge, I hop on the SSN to take Tiny down once again. His lead has evolved into a Cotton CO who didn't learn its lesson about Stun Spore, so yet again, Charchu is free to nastily plot. After a Leech Seed, we one-shot with Ember. Nothing is new about his Niniard or Solavi, so let's move right to his last mon, Slugbass. Well, that was anticlimactic. We grab Cut from the Captain, and now it's grinding time before the third gym. On Route 7 to the east, I catch this Pichu Voltorb fusion and also decide to add a Drifloon to my team. After unfusing Peorb, I go to the Pokemon fan club and trade Voltorb in for a beautiful Doduo. Now I can do this. Two Pikachu heads, you gotta love it. I also use that Drift Loon I caught to create Flying Pikachu 2.0. Quick Blackjack break with my gambling buddy, and now it's time for a high voltage matchup against my subordinate. Or at least it would have been, but Modern Mode made the Lieutenant a fighting type trainer. Turn 1, I have Katachu set up Reflect as she eats Karate Chop for almost no damage. Then Nose Key hangs on through Psybeam thanks to Sturdy, but we get the confusion. The Rock Monkey manages to break through and Seismic Toss us, and despite a Super Potion next turn, we pick up the KO with another Psychic Blast. Surge's Ace Houndlaid hits the field next, and honestly, this thing is sick. Knowing Katachu can't do anything to the Dark Fighting type, I Thunder Wave before dropping to Bite. Now I go to Pika Duo, who plucks for around 80%, procking the Houndoom Glade Citrus Berry. Our bird then eats Rock Smash, and following Super Potion number 2, it just takes a pair of plucks to get the KO. Last is a Fletchop who's outsped by our Roadrunner and one-shot with Pluck, earning us the Thunder Badge and reminding Surge why we're known as General Shock. 
Now we can put Vermilion behind us, and as we head toward Rock Tunnel, I catch myself a Cubone who's fused with a Pichu into P-Bone. Inside the ever-annoying cavern, I also nab myself a Golit, so say hello to Pillet. Shortly after, Drifchu hits level 28 and evolves, followed by Pikaduo who decided to get in on the fun as he becomes Pikadrio. Once we're through the tunnel, I head for Celadon City, and after beating this trainer's Fletch Vial on Route 8, the Pichu side of Pillet and P-Bone evolve, giving us much better sprites in Pikalit and Pikabone. I also love how Pikabone has a Thunderstone color on its bone and helmet. If you thought the catching and evolving ends here, you better buckle up. In the grass, I run into a slack off, and there's no way I'm passing up on the opportunity to fuse Pikachu with slacking. But for now, we'll be starting with Peekoff. It wouldn't be any fun keeping Truant on this thing, so this is my one exception to always taking the non-Pikachu ability. I'll spare you the intermediary evolution and jump to when this thing is finally a custom sprite as Pikaroth. On the outskirts of Celadon, I add one last member to my ranks for now, Mimikyu, who has an absolutely incredible fusion sprite with Pikachu. Side note, there are little quests in this game, and to complete one, I handed this girl a Pokemon egg to cook into an omelette. Is that legal? I flee the potential crime scene and decide it's finally time to evolve Ichu. After slapping a water stone on our little buddy, he evolves into Vapor Chew, and it's a good thing I didn't pick the other fusion. At level 30, Zochu gets a nice power boost as he evolves, and at 28, Pika Bone is now Pika Whack. I was stuck in Celadon until I finally realized that I needed to backtrack to Lavender Town and battle Private Tiny at the Pokemon Tower. My team is a little strong for him, but let me just show off his new fusions. His starter evolved yet again into Whimsixio, the Ninkata half of his Niniard evolved into Ninjask, he's got a new Axew Bagon fusion as well as a Litzel, and his Solo V is now a Duo V. Oh, and Slugbass still sucks. As he's about to run out crying, we overhear a commotion and decide to check it out. Team Rocket grunts are harassing Mr. Fuji, demanding that he tell them how to create a Master Ball. After taking him further into the tower, all we can do is return to Celadon and investigate as to why Team Rocket is stationed within the city. We find Erika outside her gym, and once we tell her the old man has been kidnapped, she decides to team up with us to explore the sewers. The underbelly of the city is crawling with members from the criminal organization, but more importantly, this Raticate Cough Agrigus fusion is unbelievable. Once we infiltrate the underground Rocket headquarters, Hanchu finally evolves into Dochu, and this thing is amazing. We see that Erika made it to Giovanni before us, but his power overwhelmed her, so it's up to us to defeat him. His lead is Hanchzing as I send out my newest evolution. I Swords Dance and eat a not very effective Drill Peck, but turn 2 we're swaggered and hit ourselves for big damage at plus 4 attack. I make the risky play of staying in as Dochu snaps out of her confusion and connects Spark, which doesn't even kill. Luckily, a second Drill Peck comes out, so we're free next turn to take the first KO with our Electric Charge. The Rocket Boss isn't playing around though, as he goes right to his ace, Kekrior. Oh boy, who gave this thing Protean? After a turn 1 fake out, we're then Shadow Sneaked for a KO. What can't this behemoth do? I go to Zochu next, whose foul play is sure to do big damage, but after hanging on in the red, even the not very effective Thunder Punch still takes out about half our health. With a max potion coming in and foul play no longer being super effective, we don't even do 50% as the Rocky Chameleon hangs on through two more foul plays to get a second KO under its belt with Thunder Punch. Then I make a truly terrible play as I bring Katachu in against a massive attack stat and stab Shadow Sneak. That one's on me. By the skin of his bills, Picadrio lives on 15 HP to the not yet revealed Sucker Punch and is finally able to knock this monster out with Pluck. Now we're faced with Smeargar, who of course has Fake Out, so it's down to a 2 on 2. Make that a 1 on 2. Vaporchu doesn't take too much from Power Gem, giving him an opportunity to set up Nasty Plot. After surviving Dark Pulse on 36 HP, we fire off a massive discharge to one shot, revealing a Zoshian that was using Illusion. As the real Smeargar comes in, we tank Hex, and just when I think the battle's over, I see a Focus Sash come into play. Thankfully, we got the Paro, so next turn we outspeed and are able to end this battle with one last high voltage attack. Giovanni leaves behind the Sylph Scope as a sign of respect, and Erika returns to the gym so we can finally progress in this game. Assuming the level cap must be 37 instead of 35 like I had originally thought, I grind up a bit more and finally evolve Charchu into its long-awaited final form. And can I just say, I love this thing. 
Alright Erika, you've kept me waiting long enough. We start off with Pikachu going up against her Typhther, who takes about 50% from Pluck and strikes back with a not very effective wing attack, passing its sticky bar back and forth. The Bug Type leader heals her lead, but two more Plucks are strong enough to give us the advantage in this battle. Wanting to even the score, Erika goes right to her ace Galvancon, who's outsped for Pluck as it eats a Citrus Berry and retaliates with Dizzy Punch. The contact move transferred the Barb, so our trio is still in this one. Knowing she'll be outsped, the former Grassmaster tries to conserve her ace by going into Buttergeus, but this switch just sealed her fate. Since we're still the fastest thing on the field, two plucks drops the Ghost Bug, and it just takes one more to KO the returning Galvancon, completing our sweep of the Rainbow Badge. Since we now have the Sylph Scope, it's time to revisit Pokemon Tower. After defeating this haunted girl, our Catachew finally evolves into... Oh, yeah, what a cool sprite. At the top of the tower, I was expecting a few rocket battles, but Mr. Fuji tells us they stole the Master Ball prototype and left. He gives us the Pokey Flute to help us on our journey, but first a quick stop at the Pokemon Center. Up till now, I've been prioritizing the fusion with the higher base stats, but some of them don't look the best. I decide to use a DNA reverser on Drifchu, and now we have ourselves a Pikachu hot air balloon. Just when I thought our rocket thwarting days were on hold, we see the evildoers have taken over Saffron. We infiltrate Sylvco to try to free the city, and after dealing with this Grunt's Dusknix, Talonican, and Crowdrill, Raichu evolves into his final form, Lukachu. Picaroth also evolves into the goofy but intimidating Pika King as we continue to move through the office building. On our way to save the company president, Private Tiny stops us for yet another battle, and I'm actually underleveled. His starter, Whimsaray, is now in its final form, and Tail wins as I set up a Swords Dance with Dochu. Next turn, Giga Drain does surprisingly big damage as I start building up Fury Cutters. A Volt Switch brings in Lampsoul, who easily wards off my attack and then suffers a burn from its Flame Orb. The Lampshade tricks the item onto me and just hangs on through Spark plus its own burn damage. Dochu is able to outspeed with a Shadow Sneak to kill, but now Tiny reveals his evolved Magtic, which serves our Steel type into the ground. I go to Vapor Chew next and set up Nasty Plot as the Fiery Snake Lava Plumes for little damage. After dropping the Gooey Milotic with a Discharge, Whimsaray comes back and returns the favor via Giga Drain. Charchu is the perfect counter to this thing, but unfortunately Tiny Volt switches again as I set up Nasty Plot. Then our Flame Burst doesn't even do half to Fragon, who of course knows Rock Slide. Pikadrio manages to dodge one and survive a second on 6 HP as he avenges his buddy with some plucks. Ryupion is next out, and boy this thing is strong. It barely takes damage from Pluck before finishing our bird off with Psychic, but I still have a healthy Zochu to deal with it. It takes a pair of Night Slashes to drop the double Psychic type as we took a powerful Hyper Voice in the process. As Niniard comes in, I Thunderbolt for 55%, but after a Swords Dance and a Speed Boost, we're a sitting duck for X-Scissor. Interestingly, our rival Baton passes to his starter as Discharge tickles the Luxray Fusion. Another Volt Switch gives us a basically free Calm Mind, and as Tiny gets greedy with Swords Dance, we knock Niniard out with another big shock. Thanks to the Calm Mind boost, Alichu is then able to survive a Giga Drain Volt Switch combo from Whimsaray to narrowly win this battle with Psychics. Before taking on Giovanni, I decide to check out Future City, and whoa, this guy's got a shiny Abra. While working my way through the gym trainers, I realize that Koga is now a Dark-type master, and I'm hoping he's got some great fusions. Yup, I was right. Umterra is unreal sprite work, but after a Shadow Ball, it's revealed to be the arguably cooler Ryu Rourke. With Light Screen up, I opt for Fly, and after surviving our second on 1 HP, Koga takes an early lead in this fight with a pair of Psy Shocks to KO Peekablim. I bring Charchu in, and predicting the Hyper Potion, decide to Nasty Plot. Then after a Discharge Power, the Dark Psychic type sets up Reflect, meaning it's got dual screens. Koga full heals as a second Jolt paralyzes his lead, and with Light Screen down, this is the perfect time to strike. Hyper Potion 2 means we Nasty Plot to plus 4 and then one-shot Rear Rourke with Discharge. At level 42, the move is replaced with Thunderbolt, which we use to Oko Wee Flame after taking 50% from Night Slash. Now the leader goes to his Honchvoir, who hangs on with 1 HP and strikes back with Night Slash, leaving our fiery Pikachu on 2. Charchu gets the T-Bolt kill, but the Ace Umterra survives Flame Burst to finish her off with Crunch. 
I hadn't realized this thing was ground dark, so I waste a turn trying to spark with Dochu, who gets yawned as a result. We're actually walled pretty hard here, but I don't want to switch Pika King into an attack, so I let the Sinnoh starter knock our swordsman out with a few more chomps, regaining HP from leftovers. With the king on the field, it just takes two slashes to pick up the victory as the Dark Ninja hands over the Soul Badge. Back in Saffron, I take on the Fighting Gym to get some more experience before returning to Silphco. After taking down the Master's Hitmon Trio, Molly, and Hitmon Vire, I grab my very own Hitmon Chan, and then while doing some grinding, Pika Lit finally evolves into Pika Lurk. Time to take on Giovanni. Also, it makes so much more sense than the original games that this is a double battle. It used to feel like your rival was somehow working with Team Rocket trying to stop you, but now they're actively helping. The Rocket Boss leads Primarino and Ryris against our Lukachu and Whimsaray. Tiny sets up a sub turn one and I try to KO the Rhydon Lapras fusion with Aura Sphere, but it just isn't enough. Then a close combat Brine combo drops our Lucario fusion, so I bring in Pikachu. Giovanni heals his injured Mon and we get a tailwind from our friend as Play Rough one shots the fighting type on the other side. Like a dummy, I try to Shadow Claw the normal Ghost Gangcon, but to be fair, it also tries to outrage us after a Giga Drain from Whimsaray. Ryrus's Stone Edge busts our disguise, so I decide to swap to Zochu as Tiny finishes the Ground Ice type and we eat Dark Pulse. Foul Play has no trouble one-shotting the powerful Ghost, and after some Giga Drain chip on Sand Queen, it destroys our Zorark with Earth Power. Pikawak gets the same treatment, and unfortunately Vaporchu misses Hydro Pump when he hits the field. Thanks to Tailwind, we go first next turn, and there's no way we'd miss twice. We learn that Giovanni has been able to craft three Master Balls using the technology at Silphco, which he claims will be just enough to enact his master plan. While exploring the city a bit more, you can really see the new life that this game breathes into the Kanto region. Just take Mr. Psychic's house for example, where we see Kadabra using Kinesis on all his furniture. There's even a train now that'll take you to Goldenrod City to explore the Johto region. But for now, we'll continue our Gen 1 journey as it's time to take on Sabrina and her fairy types. I lead Dochu against her Sylphlosion, and it's odd that I'm overleveled since you have to beat Giovanni before this gym opens up. Anyway, after swapping Charchu into a Lava Plume, I Nasty Plot and dodge Hyper Beam. As I get to plus 4 special attack, the Evolution sets up Light Screen, so next turn Thunderbolt only does around 50%. We resist Moonblast and after getting to plus 6, take the KO with another Lightning Bolt. Sabrina sends out Q now, who just hangs on through Flamethrower and despite Burn cutting its attack, we still go down to Bone Merang. As the ground type faints, we're met with Drift Frill against Dochu. At plus 2 attack, we take decent damage from Hydro Pump, so I opt to go on the offensive with Spark. It looks like we should outlast the Azumarill Drift Blim Fusion, but then it crits a Hydro Pump, taking us out. Pikachu's Shadow Claw finishes the job as Aftermath takes a chunk of our health down with the blimp. Left with only a Cleflix, our Shadow Claw does about as much as Rocky Helmet Recoil, but at least we dodge Toxic. Thunderbolt definitely does better damage, but the Cosmic Snake reveals Wish, so this may take a while. Seismic Toss finally busts our disguise as we trade Thunderbolts with the Suplex, but Sabrina manages to get the better of us. In the end, it takes T-Bolt Spam from Alichu as the leader burns max potions to finally take the Universal Monster down and earn our 6th Gym Badge. On Cinnabar Island, I realized that I could actually make Chonkachu a little stronger by giving it 1 Thunderstone, turning it into the Pikachu Raichu fusion, Pikachu. And naturally, once given the DNA Reverser, it became... Raichu. I love this game. By the harbor, we notice some Rocket Grunts harassing a captain, and they actually steal his ship. This scientist tells us that they're heading for Mount Ember in the Sevi Islands in order to capture Moltres. Before giving chase, I wanted to clear out the rest of this island and look at this Torterra Shuffle Fusion I fought against. So far, the Turtwig line has had some of my favorites. After finding Blaine in the Pokemon Mansion, we convince him to go back to the gym so I can take the old man on for our 7th badge. Modern Mode makes the Hothead a Psychic-type leader, which I feel like is pretty off-base, but I guess they only had so much to work with. Anyway, he leads a Clink for Rig who survives Flamethrower from Charchu and crits a Zen Headbutt for big damage. I Nasty Plot on the full restore, and this time our Burning Breath is stopped by a Focus Sash. We do get the burn and dodge the next Psychically Charged Headbutt, so we're up 4 Mons to 3. Zano is next up, who looks like the kind of magician you don't want at your kid's birthday party. 
It hangs on through Thunderbolt, but the following Shadow Ball doesn't have quite enough juice to knock us out. This means Charchu gets a second knockout and has the pleasure of being dropped by the ex-scientist's ace, Allosaur. Zochu hits the field and eats Sludge Bomb, then crits a Night Slash to one-shot what could have been a very troublesome Pokemon. Last up is Toganoclus, which handles our Dark Cut much better than I thought it would and sets up Calm Mind. However, in a classic fit of hubris, Blaine sets up three more times, never attacking, allowing us to cleanly win this battle with some good old-fashioned spam. Once I get to Mount Ember, we have a gauntlet of rockets to take on, but look at some of these incredible fusions. Coughorona, Lucanape, and Mega Bangross are definitely some of the highlights. As we approach Giovanni, we see that he's captured Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno with his three Master Balls, and now orders his underling to triple fuse the birds. As the boss brags about his unbeatable fusion, we of course have to take it on. Introducing Zap Molcuno. I start with a Thunderbolt on the Articuno portion, but this thing attacks three times per turn, so even though our disguise negates the first, we still go down to Ice Beam plus Flamethrower. I bring Alichu in next, whose much higher special attack is enough to take Articuno out. We would have actually survived this turn too, but Moltres' Flamethrower got a burn, which takes out our last 6 HP. It's Vapor Chew's turn to attack as our Hydro Pump does massive damage to the Firebird. Zapdos opts for the not very effective Drill Peck, followed by Flamethrower, so our evolution is still in great shape. A Thunderbolt finishes Moltres, and after surviving the same from Zapdos, we're able to use our last Hydro Pump before going down to Drill Peck. I bring Pika King in to finish things here, as her sharp claws rip into the bird twice to finish it off, only taking around half damage from T-Bolt in the process. With its defeat, the fusion becomes unstable, and the birds separate, flying back to their respective roosts. Giovanni says the future of Team Rocket is unclear and then leaves, ordering his grunts not to follow. Before challenging the 8th gym, I catch a bunch more Pikachus, so let's get to fusing. First up is Pikachu and Cradily, which I honestly think looks really good. Then we have Golchu, Pikatur, Pikadactyl, Pika Growth, Pika Uck, and Pika Lee, which looks unnatural but kinda good. Is that just me? I'm sure it's not a spoiler by now that Giovanni is the 8th gym leader, but in this game he uses normal types. Knowing that, I reverse Dochu into the Ghost Electric Pika Blade, and look at this thing, it's literally just two swords. I also reverse Lukachu into Pika Rio, which looks so much better, but he does become Steel type over fighting. Now is the point in the game where my idea to only use Pikachu fusions seriously backfires. See, whenever you fuse a Pokemon, it takes half its base stats from one Mon and half from the other. Pikachu isn't exactly the best Pokemon, so even fusing it with something really strong like Lucario only gives us a base stat total equal to about a Chatot. So think of my whole team as a bunch of dumb birds going against actual strong fusions. Anyway, Giovanni rinses me a few times, but then I bring a better team to the fight, and it goes like this. We lead Pika Rio against Kekgon, but from my losses, I know this is actually Zoshin. My 4 times effective Force Palm comes up short of the kill, but at least we're hit by the not very effective Ancient Power. After 3 full restores, we high roll Force Palm to bring the lead down to its Focus Sash, as its Dark Pulse leaves us on 3 HP. Without any more heals, we can take the normal Dark type down, and Giovanni brings in a Qcon. Aura Sphere does minimal damage to the normal Ground type as Earthquake finishes our Aura Dog off. Now I go to Vapor Chew, but a Mist Hydro Pump makes things interesting. Our Amphibious Rat also hangs on with 3 HP, and this time the villain swaps into Smeargar, who takes around 70% from our Watery Blast. Fake Out guarantees a kill for Giovanni, and then I play right into his hands as Zochu Night Slashes for a kill as the Gengar Smeargle Destiny Bonds. I make a great blind call, bringing the Flying-type Pikadrio in against Qcon, and follow it up with a Swords Dance gamble that pays off as the Mother and Child fail Sucker Punch. Rinse and repeat, and then on the third SD, we're outraged for about half our health. Since we outspeed, plus 6 Drill Pack has no problem getting the knockout on Qcon, along with the leader's last two Pokemon, Poralurk and Kekgon. If you're wondering why I haven't evolved Pika Blade yet, it's because I'm stupid. I constantly forget that Dublade evolved with a Dusk Stone, but at least I remembered before the Elite Four. Remember that train to Goldenrod I mentioned earlier? It just so happens that the Johto department store has Dusk Stones in stock. After buying one, we finally get to check out Pika Slash, and while funny, it isn't that exciting, so let's reverse it back to its other form. 
Now that's a Pokemon. On Route 22, we have our final showdown with Private Tiny before the League, but since we'll be fighting him again soon, I'll just show his new mods. First, his Fragon evolved into Frements, his Rioran changed forms from Espeon to Umbreon, and his Lamp Soul is now a Lamp Vile. Nothing has changed about Victory Road, but before we jump into the Elite Four, I figured I'd show one last fusion. If I were to reverse this pretty subpar Alakazam fusion, it looks so much better. But it takes Pikachu's special attack stat, making it much worse of a Pokemon. With that out of the way, let's see if we can become champion. First up is Lorelei, who now uses water types as her Polyleon sets up rain with drizzle. Turn 1, Vapor Chew's Thunderbolt does great damage and he eats Flash Cannon from the Water Steel type. Now I Nasty Plot to plus 6 and one shot her lead, Swam Ray, and Kingdrio before Garrick Q's Focus Sash keeps it on the field so it can knock us out with Play Rough. After a Moxie boost, I bring in the speedy Pika Rio and get cheeky with Power Up Punch as Lorelei heals. Next turn, we Zing Zap for a KO and Spiramuku goes down to the same, but Innards Out leaves us on 2 HP. Oh, her last Mon is a Milotina. At least turn 1 we get a Zing Zap flinch, so we're able to bring the Aquatic Demon into the yellow before it takes us out. Just to be safe, I bring an Alichu and set up Light Screen, as a Rain Boosted Hydro Pump does exactly half my health. I'm a little surprised that Thunderbolt couldn't take this thing down, but with Alichu's sacrifice, Charchu can come in and Dragon Claw for our first Elite Four victory. Next up is Bruno and his Rock types, leading Tyrant Flame against Pika Rio. I power up punch twice as the rock flying type rock slides and then sets up its hazard. At plus 2 attack, a single zing zap gets the knockout and Bruno sends in Mororior. I expected this thing to have like no special defense, but Aura Sphere does almost nothing to it as the 4 times effective Bone Meringue destroys our lead. Vapor Chew's Hydro Pump does a fine job at taking it out, so maybe Pika Rio's special attack is just awful. Third is Kraray, who I try to Hydro Pump, but it kept Storm Drain from Cradley. Even with the boost, we survive Giga Drain, but all I can do is chip at the Electric type with Thunderbolt before being taken down. Aegechu hits the field for the first time and repeatedly smashes her head into this thing until it eventually drops, getting a flinch and a dodge on the way there. Probodon is next, and this thing is pure nightmare fuel. I King Shield in case it's a physical attacker, but Eruption says otherwise. I'm outsped so our knight gets decimated before she could do any damage to the mustachioed legendary. I bring my triplets in who jump kick for around 40% but stealth rock damage plus fire blast turn him into a thanksgiving dinner. Now Alichu crits a psychic leaving the rock ground type in the red as it uses the resisted magnet bomb. Expecting a heal I opt for calm mind which actually lets me survive the ensuing fire blast. One more Psychic drops the beast, and then Octostar is brought down to its Focus Sash by T-Bolt. The Cephalopod signal beams my Psychic type, leaving me once again with only Charchu. Thanks to Moody, we'll be getting outsped, but we actually take less damage than I thought we would from Octazooka, and even with the accuracy drop, Thunderbolt hits its mark for a kill. Last up is Armatops, as I pray Thunderbolt will be enough to win. The double fossil hangs on but uses the non-stab cross poison which we survive with 8 HP. One more of Zeus's bolts and we barely managed to squeak through battle number 2. Agatha ditched her ghost types for poison as she leads Clef Raid against my Alichu. Turn 1 we light screen which ends up being the correct decision as Sludge Bomb connects. Then I set up two calm mines as the cheerleader scatters some toxic spikes and uses Moonblast. Plus 2 Psychic is only strong enough to do about 75% to the fully evolved fusion, so we're forced to take a second Moonblast. On the full restore, we crit Psychic, but it still can't get the job done, so this time I Thunderbolt first, then finish the lead off. Duskplume and Shandabog both can't stand up to our special attack stat, but then the Dark Poison Umzing comes out. Side note, all Weezing fusions in this game are amazing. Anyway, another light screen allows us to survive a sludge bomb and with her dying breath, Alichu thunderbolts as she's toxic for a KO. Aegechu's thunderbolt avenges her buddy and then the ace Mo'o is sent out. Thunderbolt does around a quarter of the Johto Legend's health as it minimizes, but our soldier has no guard. A switch to Crowrose basically negates my next T-Bolt, so I make a switch to Charchu, who's poisoned by the spikes but dodges air cutter. After a flamethrower, I see how little damage this thing can do to me, so I decide to start setting up. 
Of course, now it switches to Poison Fang for solid damage, but at plus two, Flamethrower is strong enough to drop the Lightning Bat. Now it's back to Mu'o, who Charchu is able to use a plus two Thunderbolt on and win the battle. Our first fusion has really been pulling her weight so far. Let's see if she can keep it up against Lance and his flying types. First up is Toga Flame, who air slashes as we start to set up. On turn two, a crit Aura Sphere flinches us, and then another crit, this time Moonblast, takes us out. I bring Vapor Chew in and try setting up with him as it looks like we survived two Moonblasts. The second one gets the special attack drop, but at plus one, Thunderbolt is still strong enough to even things up. There's no way we outspeed Septactyl, whose Leaf Blade finishes our water type off. For some reason, the Flying Grass type uses the not very effective Drain Punch on Picadrio, who fires back with a Drill Peck for a one shot. Okay, hold on. Dark Knight is my favorite fusion I've seen so far. Zingzat being not very effective tells me this thing isn't even Flying type, but Dragon Dark. Stab Life Orb boosted Dark Pulse sends us to the Shadow Realm as I bring Picadrio in to deal with this monster. With only a little HP gone, Lance decides to heal his ace, so I actually get a free pup off. I take a gamble that the same will happen next turn, which immediately pays off. This time I don't get so lucky as I should have close combated, but got greedy, and as a result, not only do we not get the kill, but we're KO'd in return. Against Aegechu, the demonic dragon uses Blizzard, so after not taking too much damage, we finally send it back to where it came from with Iron Head. Shandamuri takes a pair of bolts to drop and does good damage to us with Shadow Ball before it faints. So, he also has an Age of Slash fusion. This one, however, is flying instead of dragon, so after its swords dances, our Thunderbolt actually does respectable damage. We hang on through a plus two crit Iron Head, but naturally we're flinched and KO'd on the following turn by another. Putting complete faith in Alichu's speed and special attack, we're able to strike first and drop the Ironclad Wyvern with Thunderbolt, revealing Lance's last Pokemon, Dobat. We bring the dual wielder down to a single hit point as all it can do is tickle us with the not very effective Iron Head before being felled. With the E4 taken care of, all that's left to do is remind Private Tiny why he's a bottom ranking soldier. We jump into battle and I lose. That was just a fluke, we definitely have him this time. Okay, why is the champion battle incredibly difficult? I already know the answer is because my Pokemon stats aren't good, but it doesn't make this any less frustrating. I have so many hours of footage losing this fight, but I digress. Eventually I realized that my team was missing one key player that would tip the scales in my favor. So after accepting a blackout, I brought in my secret weapon, Pikachu. Obviously, I had to rebeat the league, but I've already shown you that I can handle them, so let's finally put this battle to rest. The fully evolved Ninsharp is his lead against Charchu, who flamethrowers the speedy skeleton down to its focus sash. Despite a sword stance, I can one-shot the bug steel type as Tiny burns a heal on it. Now it's time for the Pokemon who gave me the most trouble, Haxmentz. I swap Pikachu in, whose disguise will negate all earthquake damage. Now it's time for my foolproof strategy. Earthquake has 10 PP and I have a flying type. When anything other than Picadrio is on the field, the AI will see a kill with the ground type move and use it. But what about when the Dodrio fusion is out there? Pretty much without fail, the AI goes for outrage. So as long as I constantly swap between Pikachu and Picadrio until Haxmintz runs out of earthquakes, we're in the clear. My plan pays off, and now with Pikachu in, I can Swords Dance since this thing either has to fly or Dragon Dance. After three turns of this, Haxmintz uses another D Dance, so we pick up a Play Rough Kill at plus six. Now, I don't know how, but our rival got his hands on a triple fusion of the Sinnoh starters. The Fire Grass type takes 50% from Play Rough, then Flare Blitzes to pop out Disguise, which resets every time we switch out in this game. I know, absolutely busted. Anyway, after a second play rough KOs the triple threat, Tiny finally reveals his ace, an Arceus Luxray fusion. This man fused God. Since our disguise is currently inactive, I swap Picadrio in as a sack to retaliate, then go to our trusty steel type who I taught Earthquake to. After surviving Thunderbolt, another not very effective move, Extreme Speed, manages to KO our Lucario before he could finish the creator off. Tiny really held out on using this full restore as I was convinced Aegechu had a KO coming with strength. She does pretty much nothing to this thing before it takes her out and our chances of a win are starting to look a little slim. 
But who's always had our back? That's right. Charchu dodges a Stone Edge and manages to connect Will-O-Wisp on the Legendary to cut its attack in half. Even with the debuff, this thing is still so strong as I make an error by setting up instead of all out attacking. As Charchu goes down to E speed plus retaliate, the Thunder God is left in the yellow. Now I go back to Pikachu whose disguise eats up E speed and thanks to life orb damage, the Calamity faints and we get an uncontested sword stance up. Shadow Sneak then does half of Shantavile's health and it misses Blizzard. Since our second priority attack comes up short of a kill, we unfortunately get the Flame Orb tricked onto us and burned as the Weavile Chandelure fusion bites the dust. That burn was huge as Pikachu wasn't only the answer for Haxmance, but also the incredibly bulky Ryu Rion. Since our attack is halved, X Scissor only does around 60% instead of ending this battle, and a single Psychic takes us out. Can Vapor Chew get us out of this jam? In dramatic fashion, we miss our first Hydro Pump and Dark Pulse does just under half our health. I hold my breath next turn as we connect the Pressure Cannon and avoid a high roll living on 22 HP. It all comes down to this last attack, but Vapor Chew knows the struggle we've been through to get to this point. He puts on his glasses, cocks his head back, and unleashes an unavoidable Hydro Powered Surge, taking out his counterpart and securing our place in the Hall of Fame. This game was so much fun to play and I really liked creating all these Pikachu fusions. I would love to give this another run through or go through the Johto region with a different challenge, so definitely let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more Infinite Fusion. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.